It's the speaker that broke the internet. It's the Soundcore Motion X600. Hmm, it's got a lot of us talking. What's going on? If you're like me, you've seen a lot of sus reviews. On a lot of those reviews, you'll see someone called Jason Mello. He's been watching reviews like I have, where everyone is saying, new tech, new tech, new tech. I haven't mentioned it. I'm expecting you to already know it, but if, I, if you don't already know it, what's the big deal about this speaker? It's got spatial audio. Ooh! Spatial, spatial audio. audio! Spatial audio! What spatial audio? Well, it's where they're trying to go beyond normal stereo image and make it sound like it's coming from all around you, including the back of you, almost like having headphones on when you listen to bun or recordings. Of course, we know it's not really going to do that, but the thing is, they've been saying, it's new tech. And me and Jason have been saying, it's not new tech, it's not new tech. Jason has been saying, they're using crosstalk cancellation. That's, I think, that dates back to the 1960s. 35, 23, that's 58. I declare 58 years, probably not new tech. With lossless recording and spatial audio, especially. It is a technology that promises to bring more immersive 3D sound so that the sound seems like it's coming from all around you. There are very few brands that have this new technology, this new technology, this new technology, this new technology. In the digital realm, crosstalk cancellation led on to ambient phonics. That was where they tried to, to try to get crosstalk cancellation via digital processing. What is crosstalk cancellation? Well, when you put on your when you put on your headphones to listen to binaural recordings, why do you, why do they tell you where it's best used with headphones? It's because you get clear left-right separation. It's all about cap binaural is all about capturing exactly what's at each ear. And when you play binaural back over loudspeakers, the left speaker bleeds over to the right but it's out of phase. So you're hit it, hearing the left hit the left ear, and then slightly out of phase, it's hitting the right ear. And then it's also, it's also, it's, in, it's not interfering, it's uh, inter interacting with your body. Your body casts a shadow, which uh, causes differences between left and right, but the actual phase differences, or the, the, the difference in the sound pressure from one ear to the other, because it's out of phase, all this is how your ears work out where sound is coming. So if you're getting some of those spatial cues that, that have been captured in the original recording, say a binaural recording, and it's bleeding over to the other ear, you're losing all the imaging. Even outside a binaural recording, if you can stop that left loudspeaker bleeding over to your right ear, on the basis that it's a good recording and it's probably capturing some of those spatial cues, and there are many spatial cues. So crosstalk cancellation is about making sure those cues are not getting muddied, or if they're in the original track, they're going directly to the left and right. Well, so how do you do that with loudspeakers? What they do is, that in the digital realm, they predict what is coming out of the left, what would it sound like on your right ear, where they don't want it on your right ear, and it's basically almost out of phase. It's not, it's not really a phase difference, but the anti-noise, if you like, is then, is then sent from the right speaker, which cancels that out. But of course, now you've got an extra signal coming from the right speaker that's going to the left ear. So you now got to do the same to the left speaker. And it becomes a bit of a loop. It's a long loop. And at the end of that loop, you will get to a point where you no longer have to do any cancellation. So crosstalk cancellation is the basis of this spatial audio. But it's not the whole story. It's not perfect in itself. And you'll find companies who do, who implement uh, crosstalk cancellation will do it in all, all different ways. And whether they and even based on your own ear, depending on the company, there's there's lots of patterns over and above crosstalk cancellation. But just know at its most basic level, crosstalk cancellation is about stopping the bleed over of stuff that should go to one ear going to the other, and you will automatically get a more even not on binaural recording or even on normal stereo recordings where some of those spatial cues should be embedded. You'll already get a, a bigger sense of spatiality if you want because it's, it's more in line with how your ears work at its most basic level. You, you do it with two speakers, but a lot of companies do it with arrays. And here's the problem. It's, it's all based on a predicted listening position, which you can do with stereo because there are, you know, there, there are certain accepted ways to set up 
two stereo speakers and you know in a triangle where you're sitting in the middle coming at you at angles. You can do some prediction. When it comes to uh, Bluetooth speakers, there's a hell of a difference. You're all over the place. The first thing you should know about Crosstalk, now I'm gonna say, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying that's what Jason's saying. I'm not convinced that that's the major part of what's going on. I'm sure it's part of what's going on in the digital realm, but there's more going on. Because, not least, they've got an upward firing driver. It's complicated enough to implement well crosstalk cancellation. And that's at one listening position. And by, na by the nature of these you know, portable speakers, you're gonna be all over the place. So the first thing you should know is, if you hold it like that, and almost like headphones, you'll get a fantastic 3D image because it's based on a sweet spot. Once you start moving around a little bit, that's why they use arrays to predict how your head is moving. You'll even find them where they'll, tr they'll use cameras to track your head because it's very, very precise and it's very, very complicated. And there's lots of painted methods of doing it layered onto crosstalk cancellation. Over and above that, we've got up mixing going on. They are only, this, this code's nothing. So it only accepts a stereo signal, two channels. And it's up mixing it to use with the upward firing driver. When we talk about in the digital realm, realm this is Ambiophonics because it's digitally trying to do, by the way, because you could actually sit there with something, when you're listening to your loudspeakers, you could sit there with, some, with a barrier to the front of you, which would also have the effect to a somewhat degree of filtering that what's going from one to the other. You'll already improve that. No, I don't, I'm not suggesting you should sit there like that, but you could do. They could have almost said, hold it like that. When you listen to some loudspeakers, it's about creating that barrier. Wanted to just to put that to bed and to understand when they say spatial audio, it's about how do you create a 3D image around you? And that is not, that's decades old tech. I am sick and tired of hearing so-called respected reviewers say, and they've implemented new tech. It's not new tech. It may be their in-house algorithm, but it's not new tech. It's been around for decades. When we first had, you know, the surround sound systems and we were, most of those movies were in stereo. Yes, I'm that old, when 5.1 was first came on the scene. Surround sound, most of us were implemented, our receivers were up mixing that stereo. Clue, their up mixing is a lot of what they're doing here. You should know what spatial audio is, it's just a method, which is not new, of making it sound like it's coming from all around you. And they're not comparing it to appropriate speakers, they're calling it the best speaker ever, and they're never comparing it to anything. A lot of them you will find, you know that, that place that actually sells the speakers that they show you? Yes. And, uh, and they've got lots of more subscribers than me, so what should I be talking about? Well, it's up to you to, do, to decide. I just want to say that before you say, how can you compare that big one? Oh, we knew you had a big one, now, But that's bigger than we ever thought. And don't compare it to that little thing. But if they're, compa if they're, get if they're getting 100,000 views, comparing this to the church, this five driver unit with its three amp, blah, 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 I'm sure you already know, and it's turned itself off already, I'm gonna turn it back on. They're comparing it to, with a spatial audience, all that spatial, they're comparing it to a mono, cheaper, smaller speaker. So if they can get away with it, and nobody seems to complain, I think I can compare it when we're talking about, what's the best $200 speaker? I'm saying $200, it's not even $200 the boss. It does move around in price. I checked today and it was, on, it was an incredible, incredible, $156 on Amazon, 180 quid in the UK. That's 190 quid in the UK, so only 10 pound more about $200, about $45 if you're in the US. I know there's more than two countries in the world. I'm just, most of my views do seem to come from the USA. So I do have to put it out there and I'm in the UK, so I have to put that out there. But check, check your local prices. So I, I think if they're going to say this is the best $200 speaker ever, I'm going to compare it to my pound for pound champion, in my opinion, best value. Keep, ask, keep asking me, what's the best speaker? It's the one that you enjoy the most. I can only tell you the best value and what I enjoy. I enjoy at the moment, this is that. I've been grinning it earlier, blah, blah, blah. Right, there you go. You can see exactly what's inside it. So what was I saying? <laughs> that completely threw me. I'm comparing it to my $200 champion. Then you tell me who you think you should be listening to as reviews. You can go on the other channels where they're telling you it's the best ever speaker, they're only comparing it to nothing or the Charge 5, or as we saw with that geezer, uh, I mean, it was great comedy. Uh, he was sat there, I don't know what keyboard it was. I know uh, Mark Winston said, was it a Cassio? I've got no idea. I didn't take that notice, do you know why? Because I was trying to work out. He was sitting at his keyboard, this joker. He had seemingly had that hooked into auxiliary, 
And he had that about another three foot away from that. So that was even, like twice as far from that. And it looked like that was going auxiliary, to be fair. But I asked him, of course, he, no, they never reply. Playing on a keyboard and then trying to make tell you, probably in, X, in muddy X space mode, probably in spatial, overly bright mode, and then tell you, well, look how clear that is. And to, so let's do a, a proper, fair comparison of my pound for pound champion at $200, but it's even cheaper now. Their pound for pound champion, best ever, in fact, they say, at $200. I've already explained why it's fair, even though it's a different size, a different in price, a different in size, because apparently anyone comparing to Charge 5 thinks it's... In fact, even on my comments there, people are talking about Charge 5. I'm playing this in the mode everybody seems to be playing it in. What's that, ow? Well, it's in their room. No, it's bass up on, spatial audio on. Just know, for me, I find it's very easy to overdrive the bass on this. Other people say it plays absolutely clean because no speaker plays absolutely clean. That's very, very silly. Every speaker has harmonic distortion, whether it's the drivers, the amp, blah, blah, blah. There's distortion. There's harmonic distortion. Run, run, run when you're hearing somebody, so-called respected um, reviewer, tell you it has zero distortion. That's a huge red flag. So they're playing it in that mode. I'm going to use that mode. And then I'm going to use the custom mode that I use when I listen to the Tribute Storebox Blast. It's not perfectly flat, but it's certainly more neutral than their music mode and their X bass mode. And I've kept it fair. I could have tinkled, tinkled, <laughs> sounds naughty, could have tinkered with it before this. I didn't. You've seen my post on Instagram. It is the EQ I've been using, so I didn't try and improve it, but it is much. So you can, the next thing you're going to say is blah, 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 blah. Well, yeah, put that one in the custom EQ mode, and that one is, bang. well, that's the mode they're saying is the best ever. So why would I change it? That's the mode I listen to. So I'm just allowing you to make a judgment on whose judgment is better. Are those reviewers uh, who are telling you that, or this reviewer who's not telling you that and saying, well, here's a fair comparison, in my opinion, between these two speakers, and you can tell me then where you think this Motion X600 lands. So, <laughs> how many days have we been sitting here? All right, get on, okay, so. A straight, first of all, a straight on axis comparison. So you, that's in its sweet spot, remember. That's in the sweet spot, because you, as soon as you're, you're off axis, it doesn't know where you are, there's no way of tracking. You're going to lose that imaging. But on axis, on axis, let's have a listen to the two of them. don't need me to tell you the biggest difference between these two speakers is the bass it's all the bass 300 hertz down dominated massively by the stormbox blast there is a dip 5.5 kilohertz which is a signature of my stormbox blast the 8 to 9 kilohertz peak of the motion x600 is one of its signatures it's a boost if you don't believe me and there's the original track overlaid you may have been thinking oh well the stormbox blast is massively boosted in the bass it's actually in line with the original track, slightly boosted, but not massively. There is a dip in the original track around three kilohertz mark. We do have a dip with the blast, a little bit excessive compared to the original track. And that eight kilohertz peak for the Motion X600, you can see is a big boost. But for me, the one that's in line with the original track is a Stormbox Blast, not least because the X600 simply doesn't have the bass to do justice to a track, clearly demonstrated here. Now, I said it before, I'll say it again. It is very easy to fool self-declared audiophiles. Yeah. I'm talking about self-declared audiophiles that 
in my opinion, are not really, rather than people who have really have good ears and listen on true high-end gear. And they know what a flat frequency response is. I'm talking about those self-acclaimed audiophiles who say they like a neutral sound, not a basted boost, a nice, and just neutral. And they are the most easy to fool, and it's never a neutral sound they're listening to. That's what we've got here. We've got a lack of true bass. It sounds, I know you're saying to yourself, if you're one of those people, you're saying to yourself, and he said it again, I hate this geezer, I'm going on the comments, I'm gonna set every other channel, he's done what I'm talking about. You're gonna say, that's a boosted bass, and that's got a nice natural bass and a nice natural sparkle. The truth is, that's a, that's a bright speaker, it's on an upward slant, because he has an echoic. It lacks bass, true bass. It's got a bit of mid bass push, but I find that easily overdriven. And what they call detail, it's just bright, but they automatically, so a lack of bass and a bright sound with enough mids, they automatically say it's a neutral speaker. And it isn't. So I bet you there's people at this point saying, that sounds natural, that doesn't. And I say to you, that's not true. It's not entirely neutral. I already said I could have tinkered with this and I didn't. I've left it in the, how I did it ages ago and I haven't, re haven't done it again, I haven't re-EQ'd it. Why? Because I actually quite like it like that. It's not a perfect speaker. Mine has 5.5 kilohertz dip. It's not tragic, but it's there. The bass, I kept true to the spirit of this speaker. It's a slightly overdone bass, but not by much, not as much as you think. But yes, this is in its sweet spot. It can't do the imaging of this speaker. You can hear this sounds nice and a surrounding and bright, where that sounds flat, because it's not having, it's not doing the processing that's going on. And I think part of the issue is that you hear that processing. It's, you know, it, those artifacts do come through. That will sound flat by comparison. And you may think it's a boosted bass and maybe slightly dull. I'm going to now let you hear both these speakers against the original track. I want you to know, when I record these speakers, it's with minimal room influence. So it's, it's all, almost quasi-anechoic, but you'd lose a lot of imaging if it was completely quasi-anechoic. So there's some room influence, but very, very little. That is the only way you can directly compare to original track. Because if you, if I record it like most other channel, in fact, every other channel that I'm aware of, that does it, that at least records properly and not with a shotgun mic, like these idiot reviewers are doing, shouldn't have said that. Am I gonna edit? I don't know, maybe not. No, because I'm thinking Patrick Shambles. When you record how they seem to be recording, you're, they're getting a hell of a lot of the room in there. When you play an, your tracks from Spotify, whatever you're doing, and then you put it over your headphones, that headphone is layering on its, its room response, whatever it thinks is gonna be a nice room response. What I'm saying is, when you listen to, head, to, to your tracks, loudspeakers already will automatically take on your room response. They're in your room through loudspeakers. Headphones will take on the headphones response, but you can't layer response on top of response, which is what will they do when they compare to original track. They're taking their recordings that already have the room influence in them, and then they're sh against the original track, which has no room influence, has one layered response on either the room or the headphones. When, but you're doing it twice, you cannot compare like that. You can with my recordings. You probably don't believe a word I'm saying, and you probably sodded off already. I don't blame you. 20 minutes in. Uh, <laughs> I every time I sit down there, I go, less, less preamble. But anyway, just know this is a legitimate way to, an accurate way to compare original track to the recorded track. It's the only way to do it. Have a listen. <laughs>
I hope you got what I'm talking about. That's not a boosted bass, tiny bit. And it's not um, completely dull. That is mostly in line with the original track. That's nowhere near the original track. What you do get, because of its spatial audio, and it's recorded on axis at its sweet spot, which you're very unlikely to be in most of the time, you do get that, that ambience, you know, that it's, it's bigger than the actual speakers. There's more going on around you. The actual uh, audio is not accurate. It's thin, brittle, overly bright. And it's not a lack of bass. Well, it is a lack of bass. They say it's just a nice bass and that's a boosted bass. I've just demonstrated that's actually the that's actually the most accurate bass, and that's a complete lack of bass. That's my demonstration of why some of those so-called respected. It, it shocked me what some of them have said. Have they sold the soul? I don't know. Not everyone. There are plenty of honest reviewers out there. Danny Pops. I just saw his last um, his last review, his, his last video. What else would I've seen? I'm not stalking you. Um, compared it to. Proper speakers, is the, this new orange thing, the uh, Marshalls and stuff. And he said it, it, that, and he liked that so much when I heard it. And now, just remember, just to remind you, I never said this is a terrible, is a terrible sounding speaker. I said it sounds really nice. But once you get past the novelty of spatial audio and being in that sweet spot, you just hear what's wrong. For me, maybe your speaker sounds different. You know, there's, there's some of us complaining about very bad bass distortion, and some people saying it plays absolutely clean. Are there different versions out there? I seem to be on a different firmware to everybody else. Just bear this in mind. What I want to demonstrate now is, if you're a self-declared audiophile, one of the things you should be, uh, you're probably hot on, off-axis response. And this is spatial audio, and we're saying, me and Jason have been saying, got to be in the sweet, once you're off that sweet spot, and don't forget, it's going to work. Not does, does, it's not that it works best with spatial recordings. It doesn't decode anything. But as long as the record, stereo recordings, well done, will already have spatial cues embedded in, and that's what it will help release. So better recordings will sound better. So not only does it, is it recording dependent, it's, once you're off axis, you can forget it. I'm going to re these are now recorded at 45 degrees. And if it's about off axis consistency, consistency you can tell me which one you think you prefer. To me, there's no, there's, it's night and day. The consistency between on axis and off axis, which is something you should care about. I don't, I know I don't test for that. There's a limit to what I can do, but it does matter. I just want to demonstrate when you're being told this is the best speaker ever and spatial audio is the greatest thing since sliced bread. And by the way, when they first had sliced bread, what did they say then? It's be maybe they said it's the best thing since the Motion X600. I don't know. Anything's possible from what I'm seeing at the moment on YouTube. Just know, oh, I've forgotten what I'm saying yet again, that's brilliant. Basically, the, it, the, you've got to be in the sweet spot, just like Jason told you. When you move off axis, that collapses. You lose the novelty of the spatial audio. You hear a lot of what is wrong with the response, which we've already showed, even on axis, is not really true to the original track. This is far more consistent on and off. What you are probably telling me is boosted bass isn't. That's what the original track sounded like. It's just that you're a self-declared audiophile. Look, I'm not, I'm not knocking any of my subscribers. 
I'm just lightheartedly trying to bring some reality back to stuff that has become fables on YouTube and just gets accepted now. And it's, it's really not true. So for me, you, you, you decide, look, if you've bought the Motion 600, and I know a lot of you are telling me you think it sounds fantastic, and that's fine. You've only got to like what you hear. I, I, I'm just trying to put out real information. And I think it needs doing at the moment. For me, obviously this is miles heavier and all that, and we'll get onto the specs. For me, I've, I think I've already demonstrated enough that for me, this offers better value. And if you are a, an, an audiophile, why do you prefer that over this? This is more accurate. Basically, with my Alan Ross EQ, which I haven't even updated to make it sound even better. I've left it exactly how months ago I had it on Instagram. Because I'm not cheating. Going to do the maximum volume test. No shocker now, the Stormbox Blast was indeed the loudest by a huge margin. Nearly six decibels in terms of peaks and six decibels again for overall loudness. The Motion X600, which is it has a bright tuning, but now rolls off at the high end. You're left really with just a load of mids. A bit more balanced on the Stormbox Blast, even taking into account it's massively louder anyway. So I, I don't think you need me to tell you anything. I, I, who goes the loudest? It's a Charge 5. It's not a Charge 5. I'm messing with you again. It's a Trivet Stormbox Blast, not even in x bass mode or anything like that. It's in custom EQ, which is never the... Which, normally, you lose the more bass in custom EQ because you've messed with their filters. Um, and that's lost, isn't it? It's all mids at maximum volume. That's all mids. Left it in spatial audio mode. Bass up on. What about the specs? Oh, we've got any time left. Oh, we'll tell you. Talk about the price. That's the best value out there for me, but it may be too big, too heavy, too ugly. A lot of you don't even like it because of the lights. Here's the thing. I don't know why these reviewers are not telling you. For me, I don't, I don't know what the specs say for multi-point uh, multi functionality. For me, when I've tested it with my two uh, phones, you can only play once, one at a time. Can switch between two devices with a Trivic Stormbox Blast. In terms of the battery, we've got a massive, it's huge. And I'm not even talking about that. It's the 46.11 hours of the Soundcore Motion X600, the best speaker ever. But hang on a second. One they didn't tell you about, the Trivix Unbox Blast. Yes, it's big. This has got more bass, so you're gonna need a bigger battery, but it's 71.3, getting on for twice the size. 71.3 watt hours, and that's a proper old battery. That's a big battery, don't get me wrong, for that speaker. I'm just saying it's not as big as that one. Codex is normally a point oh, and it's got this PC. But today we're gonna to talk about loads of other things, but we only got we've got our lives to get on with, so I won't. I'll just mention that's SBC. That is LDAC if you're an Android. A lot of the hype on this is it's not hype, I mean it's nice to have a good codec, but uh, it's not first of all, LDAC is compressed. It's not lossless. It'll be lossless if you're playing up to CD quality, because it can do it bit for bit. But it's compressed LDAC is compressed. So the the lossless audio is via auxiliary on this. It's not via wireless, as they these idiots keep telling you. 990 can do up to 990 kilobits per second at best. If you're close, it's going to be adaptive, and it will, could come down from that quite easily. SBC 328 kilobits per second. Both have a Bluetooth 5.3. Both do stereo pairing. It's so a mains lead for the Blast, it's USB-C lead for the Mission X600. Both have auxiliary input. Only the Tribit Stormbox Blast can be used as a power bank, but it's a bit big to lug just for that functionality. 
Only the Motion X600 can be used for phone calls. Only the Blast has uh, lights. 90 watts, that's rated. 50 watts, that's rated. Three amps, total of 50 watts. Some people are telling you it's 50 watts per amp. Powered by 350 watt amplifiers. 350 watt amplifiers. It's massively bigger, I'll give you that. Five point, uh, five, basically five and a half kilos versus two kilos, that's massive. But I would explain it's legitimate because they will want you to compare it to the Charge 5. They both float, but only the Blast will float with the drivers up on mine. Others have a different experience because they are both IPX7, means one meter of water for 30 minutes. So we've got the five drivers, we've got a 50, uh, 50 millimeter upward firing driver, we've got two 60 millimeter woofers, two 27 millimeter tweeters, one passive radiator on the back. Passive radiator, passive radiator. Woofer, woofer, tweeter, tweeter. That's 107 millimeter, the woofers, 25 millimeter the tweeters. Both of them are very good for on there. They've got an auxiliary and they both have a zero lag. That's exactly how it should be, but it, unfortunately it really isn't. And they're both good for, for streaming YouTube and stuff. 83 milliseconds for the X600, 66 milliseconds for the Blast. They're both very usable in terms of getting, of not getting annoying lip sync. Is this a nice speaker? Yes. Depending on your ears, you, you will find that really nice for the rest of your life or for 10 minutes, as in my case, you get past that novelty, you start moving off axis. And anyway, you know what the track should sound like. Um, I mean, I mean, if you if, if don't have to have other uh, speakers, flat headphones, listen to the original track, then listen to this, then tell me uh, which one uh, sounds closer to the original track. So I don't want to get off thinking, oh, he's just hating on the Motion 600. No, I, I'm not hating at all. That's really nice. It's really weird holding it like that and having everything come almost like a headphone experience. If you're that, you know, if you're in that sweet spot and that right, right up against it like that and you're not getting any more bleed over. As I said, Jason says it's all cross-talk cancellation. There's no way that's all cross-talk cancellation. It'd be impossible uh, after these two little narrow speakers to stop bleed over to each ear. But, uh, but it is interesting to know it's not new tech. And most, whatever tech it is, it'll be based on some sort of cross-talk cancellation because that's how you get the imaging. So there you have it. Only one thing left for another day, and I don't know if I ever get around to it, but it seems to have a parametric equalizer. They already had class leading EQ, but Tribit have got a very nice EQ, as, you, as you've as you seen. But I would say class leading for the sound core, in ease of use, it's slightly buggy, slightly hard to use. Every time they update the app, it's a little bit different. But it's now, where it used to be fixed bands, now you can mess around with those bands. Yes, I may or may not get around to it, it's just time that's limiting. It's not that I don't want to do it anymore, really. It's just that I can't, I can't justify the time that these things take. I don't just sit there and, and do it by ear. I mean, I, I start by trying to get it, tune it as flat as, for, as possible, and then work within the limits of speaker to how it should sound, in my opinion. Blah, 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 blah. You know me as Mr. Boomy Bass, and it should be as Mr. Blah, 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 to be quite honest. But anyway, uh, that's been my video. Did it sound like a rant? It's not meant to be a rant. It's meant to be... Just, just get, just get real, mate. Get real. All those, I don't know what to call them anymore because there's lots of honest people. I'm not saying if someone says they like this speaker and it's fantastic and it's the best speaker, that makes them dishonest. I'm saying the ones that are actually giving you bad information, not comparing it to others, where it's clearly something else going on. Mr. Uh, Ascended Tech Ninja is due to get two, I believe, Motion X600s. Well, that would be interesting to hear uh, what he says. Please check out his channel, uh, Mr. Tech, Tech Da Audio, Audios. I'm not sure if he's, I think he actually said he is getting one. So that's another one. two honest reviewers to, to definitely check out. And I will personally vouch for those geezers. Thank you for watching. I'll see you uh, again. What the f was that? Ah! comes from China. China. My speaker's got deep bass, balanced mids, and a bright high. Yes, mine sounds exactly the same.